How do you know when you should quit something? You know, there's so many quotes that talk about how you should never quit, but in reality, we actually should quit. There's a lot of things that we should quit. And maybe it's not quitting the ultimate goal that you were trying to achieve, but maybe it's quitting one of the methods that you're using to get there. And in this video, we're continuing a conversation with a good friend of mine where we're talking about this exact thing, trying to figure out when you should quit, when you should pivot to something else. And if you didn't watch part one of this series, I'll have it linked up above. So without further ado, let's dive in. One of the kind of challenging things with this is because I see, you know, and I'm sure you do too, like with my students, with readers I've talked to, I see some people who don't fail the right way. Uh, and I guess what I mean by that is they don't pivot. You know, and I think you probably talk to a lot of different people about this. So I'm curious your thoughts on how to determine when you need to pivot. And maybe we should explain what that is. But uh, and when when it's time to quit something mm -hmm. and when it's time to stick it out. Yeah. How do you think through that? Man, I love that word, first of all, pivot, because that's really, I mean, pivot, to, to me, I was a former basketball player, so it yeah. just comes from, you know, you, you pivot is just literally like you rotate slightly, right? Yeah. <laughs> you keep one foot on the one ground foot, and yeah. you can just move a direction and you're not, you're not stuck, right? And so that's what I think, that's the image that I picture is yeah. like being stuck, to let's just pivot this way because yeah. that could open up something completely different. And that's something I talk about with a lot of my students too is what what you're you know running up against, that wall you might be hitting, just really a slight tweak in sometimes positioning or, or your messaging or your audience. So for me, when I was blogging, I was starting like a productivity blog. Yeah. And I just thought, well, this is what it has to be because this is really all I'm interested in. This is all I know about. And I, I was getting nowhere with it. And I came across this software for writers and my first thought is well I'm not I'm not a writer I haven't written a book I haven't published a book yeah. I hated writing actually in high school <laughs> in college it was like my worst subject yeah. so I'm like that definitely cannot be for me so you just kind of yeah. dismiss it but I'm like but it matches all of these things that I've been looking for and you know there's there's a pain I actually think I could solve it and um, it was it was like these you have these moments I think where they're like a fork in the road, really, yeah. where something comes across your path. And for whatever reason, you know, I like to think it's God's nudging or when you're praying for wisdom, it's just something that kind of nagging, it won't go away. And you're just like, hmm, I remember just literally being in the coffee shop, seeing this opportunity, reading a blog post about this software and seeing the comments say, there's just such a learning curve and I wish I could learn it. I wish there was a course on it. And it was yeah. just this moment of, hmm, that's totally not what I'm doing with this productivity blog. Well, this is like something totally separate, but there was something of like, I wonder if I could do that. And it started with that. Yeah. And it's scary today to think, what if I had just dismissed it? And be like, no, it's... you tried that stupid ebook and that didn't work. You tried that and that didn't work. What makes you think this is going to work? Yeah. Let's not do that. And I literally wouldn't be here talking with you today, yeah. you know? And it's like, there was one of those pivotal moments where I remember the question, and this is something I tried to teach a lot of my students and, and, and live myself, is ask, when you have that moment come up, is ask yourself, instead of why me, why not me? Yeah. And it's just like, why not? I mean, it just yeah. kind of takes the pressure off of you. And like, what's the worst that could happen? Sometimes I have to go there. Like, all right, let's just play that out. Yeah. What's the absolute worst that could happen? Well, I spend a few months trying to create this course and I put energy into it, I time into it, and nobody buys it. That would be the worst thing that could happen, right? Yeah. And I'm like, that's not all that bad. And in the process, I would, would learn some things. I can learn how to create a course. I would learn yeah. how to research. Yeah. And then I'll have the skills to, I could use that somewhere else. Yeah. Or I could use it back in the corporate world and go back yeah. there. So just kind of playing through that for me, that's, little, that's yeah, usually that's my, really first I ask myself, why not me? And then I say, all right, let's play out the worst case scenario. And sleep on it obviously and if it's still kind of there I'm just like I, I think I'm gonna try this you know yeah. and um, I did I remember trying it, thinking of it as an experiment and I'm so glad I did <laughs> yeah no that's really good I mean I think something else is believers too that you know I struggle with sometimes uh, is I want to do what God has for me to do but I don't always know exactly what God has for me to do yeah and for a while, so afraid of missing it. <laughs> yeah, for a while, it's like I didn't want to waste any time on anything. I didn't want to try anything unless I knew for 100% sure that it was what God wanted me to do. And I feel like just over my years of being a Christian, I feel like I've learned more that God directs us with um, red lights than green lights. Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by that, and I heard somebody else say this, I didn't come up with it, but what I mean by that is this idea that I just feel like we're supposed to walk 
be in motion. And if we start walking the wrong direction, he will let us know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than just waiting, standing, 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 waiting for whatever, a green light to come to say go. You know, and this is a different thing than, you know, uh, Isaiah 41 or whatever it is, of those who wait on the Lord. I'm not speaking about that, um, but just in terms of trying things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, because sometimes I think in order for us to get here to here, in this middle area, God knows we kind of have to become this person along this journey. Yeah. And it's like yeah. as we take these little detours, we're becoming that person. Yeah. We can't, we're not ready to be here yet, even though we think we are. Yeah. And I always visualize it as, well, if God called me to do something, it should be a straight line. Like, okay, I'm just going to go straight there. Everything's going to work out. It's all going to be green lights. Yeah. And we hit these red lights, and then what do we do? We immediately assume, I missed it. I'm not doing the right thing. Yeah. Or, oh, my gosh. And obviously, I think that's the, you know, it's the Satan, that, yeah. you know, who's yeah. obviously in play with our mind as well. Yeah. And so just to kind of recognize that and like, no, okay, this is, it's okay. I'm kind of becoming, I picture these, like this little game that my daughter plays, you know, those, or, or we played as kids, you know, those little cheap little, like, square toys and there's a oh, little ball yeah, yeah, and there's all yeah. these walls <laughs> and you have to get it from yeah. one end to the other, right? And it's like, there's multiple ways that ball can go and yeah. it can still get to the end. Yeah. So just because it's hitting a wall here, well, let's turn it this way and let's, yeah. you know, it's not always a straight line. Yeah. doesn't mean you're still not on the right path and that you still can't get there. Yeah. All right. Hope you enjoyed this. And in part three of this series, we are going to talk about how to define success as a Christian and what true biblical success looks like. And on our channel here at Seed Time, what we typically talk about are really practical ways to kind of put more money in your pocket, ways to save money and reduce debt and things like that. And then we also tackle some of the biblical principles behind managing our money. And most of these are lessons that we never were taught in school and that we should have been. And so that's what we do on this channel. So if that resonates with you, definitely consider subscribing so you can hear from us as we create more stuff. And if you enjoyed the video, you can let us know by leaving a thumbs up down below. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in part three.